Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Take 5. We are in the series that we have entitled Hidden or Forgotten. We are talking about the necessity and the importance of hiding the Word of God in our heart, of, of mixing it and integrating it into our lives until we become more like what the Word says we should be than like we actually are within ourselves. We're pulling our text from Psalm 119, uh, verse 11 through 16. Real quick, I'll just give you verse 11 and verse 16 because that kind of you know, sets the title tone for what we're talking about. Verse 11 says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Verse 16 says, I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. So that's the thing. We are striving to hide it in our heart and not forget it. Uh, to forget it is to be indifferent to it, to be like most people are, just kind of push it aside and consider the Bible it's just a religious symbol or a religious book or an amulet or something or a charm or something that we keep near us, just part of our religious experience. It is not that. Uh, it is God's plan for our life. It reveals who God is. <clears throat> it reveals what God thinks about us, his concern for us, his purpose for us in this world and in the hereafter. Uh, everything we need to know is, is there inside of the scriptures. Everything God wants us to know and nothing else and nothing less is in the word of God. And we need to apply ourselves to partaking of the scriptures on a daily basis. We need to read it. We need to study it. We need to hear it. Uh, we, need, we need to hear teaching for all of those that say, you know, I don't need church and I don't have to go to this and I don't have to be there to be saved and all this kind of stuff that people are saying today. Sure, that's fine. But we're talking about entry-level salvation. You don't have to have a church building for entry-level salvation that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. But if you're going to grow in him, you need church you need preaching, you need teaching, you need to hear the word as well. You need to read it and study the scriptures for yourself. So the last two weeks, we have just been naming some things, some reasons why we need to hide the word in our heart. There are actually 13 of them that we're talking about. We talked about seven of them last week, and we're getting the other six this week. So let's just jump right into that. Uh, today. Number two for this week, we hide the word in our heart because it reveals to you who and what you really are. Now listen to what I said. We hide the word in our heart because it reveals to you, the individual, who and what you really are. So the word gives us a picture of what we should look like and then when you see what we should look like as we look at the word, then uh, it shows us what we may actually look like right now. And the two uh, don't often line up. Let's, let's read. James talks about it and calls it a mirror. Let's read it real quick. So get rid of all the filth and the evil in your life. So we got a job to do, don't we? Now, I realize that we think that just showing up at church or if I go to enough prayer meetings, or if I do this, or I do that, if I fast enough, then, then these things are going to go away. No, it's not going to go away. You've got a constant job, a everyday J-O-B, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that we have got to do to keep this flesh under control. That's what James is saying. Get rid of the filth and the evil in your lives. He's talking to believers. He's, he's not talking to unbelievers. He's not talking to sinners. He is talking to saints. He's talking to Christians. Get rid of the filth and the evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your heart for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. So if you think uh, that you can just come to church and hear preaching, that, that you've done something, he says you're fooling yourself. I wonder how many years some of us have been fooling ourselves because we just showed up at church, we endured preaching or teaching, and we never studied it, 
We never, uh, you know, applied it. We never took advantage of what we were hearing there. We just heard it and we thought we have done our job for the day. And James said, if that's all you do, you are fooling yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself and then you walk away and you forget what you look like. Now, we all know what the mirror is for at home. We look in that mirror to fix our hair or if you're a lady to fix your makeup. I hope you're not fixing your makeup if you're a dude. That's another message for another day. But anyway, we look at that to assess, especially if it's in the morning time, assess the damage from the night before. Our hair's plastered to the side of our head. Uh, you know, you may have a little white strip running down there where you drool during the night. If you, uh, you know, wear a CPAP machine, you got strap marks going up the side of your face and all of these things. We look in that mirror so that we can repair that damage that has been done through a long night's sleep. And we want to make ourselves look as good as we can before we go out. We don't just glance at the mirror and, and look at it and then walk on and, and forget about what we saw, we look intently into that mirror and we begin to make corrections. Well, that's what we do with the word. As a matter of fact, the next verse says, but if you look carefully or intently into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, God will bless you for doing that. So, so that's the whole thing. We don't just glance at the word or just listen to the word and then walk off and forget it. We have got to look intently into the word of God. And then when we see corrections we need to make, we begin to make those corrections. Now, one thing I know is people don't like preaching that causes you to have to change. We don't want anything to cause controversy in our life, but that's what preaching is supposed to do. It's supposed to cause a controversy in your life, and, and, and that controversy is between the flesh and the spirit, and the word reveals to us what we need to do and what we need to change about our life. So when you look into that mirror of the word today, don't just glance at it and walk on and forget about it and think you've done yourself justice. You've not done yourself justice. You look intently into that law of liberty. You look intently into the mirror of the word. You make the corrections that you need to make. And guess what? You get up and you do it again tomorrow and you do it the next day and the next day and the next day. And as we do this day after day, we're becoming more and more like the Christ that's revealed in that word. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Take 5. Till then, God bless you. Have a great day. And remember, friend, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.